What is up guys, this is TCG Sam here, and for those of you who don't know, I have an eBay page where I sell a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. One of my products is actually a deck list that I will personally customize for you uh, on whatever deck that you like, and I explain all my choices and stuff. And I decided to actually film the very first process that I take when I, when I uh, do my deck building, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. So I'm going to post the customer's request. Uh, as a screenshot somewhere uh, on the screen so you guys can keep uh, reference on it uh, but I'm just gonna read it out uh, before I begin so I was wanting to build a trap focus shit all budget deck ideally under $100 USD including shipping so more likely $80 USD for the cards before shipping so likely no schism in there my biggest question personally is just which traps to prioritize over which and what to use my normal summons on as shit alls often don't really need their normal summon that much Mathematician seems like a solid option, but I was also wondering about something like Fairy Tail Luna, who is a light target for Construct who can recruit itself when normaled, or maybe there are other strong options for the normal. I want to look into doing a trap focus should all deck, as I find myself to be more control oriented in my playstyle, and I'd like to find a way to have some solid protection for Winda through some back row. Also, probably the biggest question mark will be what hand traps to run, as being trap based will make it rather susceptible to going second. So this customer wants like a cheap budget trap should all build and I think that's uh with with most likely without schism and I do think the $80 USD budget is quite flexible actually that because most of the should all cards itself are already pretty pretty cheap so I think you can actually afford schism as long as you don't play any expensive hand traps but personally I think prioritizing a card like schism is really important to the shell engine so I actually do think incorporating schism is a better idea than incorporating uh some more expensive hand traps because there are a lot of a lot of good uh, cheap hand traps in the uh, format right now. But starting off with the core shadows, the in any shadow deck, I definitely think you do absolutely need like this at very minimum this core uh, seven fusion monsters. And since it's a trap shadow deck, we can add like other stuff uh, as like if we uh, think about it on the way. So uh, keeping in mind that it prefers to it to be a trap shadow build, uh, I am gonna like first put out like the standard shadow lineup i think i do think even in a trap shadow build you probably do want to be prioritizing as many fusion spells as possible just because uh like with the budget that you have uh your traps may not be as high impact like something like ice dragon's prison or whatever so you you're gonna need your fusion spells to actually make uh impact on uh on your gameplay so for that reason I think I'm just gonna add in like just the typical should all lineup in my opinion. Uh, I would say this is very very standard. You can choose to play like one more utility should all. So either either being a uh, dragon or uh, national genius or hell should all hollow. Probably uh, actually genius works in here because it acts as a sort of pseudo disruption. If you, if we're playing a card like sinister shadow games, which I think we will be playing, just because of how strong it is. Before we get to that, I do want to finish up with the core shadows, and I think that super polymerization is going to be super super good because obviously it's really really cheap and it works super well in a deck like shadows. Not only does it give you extra fusion materials, it acts as a disruption and a going second card, so it's really powerful in that sense. And now for like the main part of the deck, so he wants a trap shadow. Uh, deck with a good normal summon that is obviously cheap. So the list of normal summons for Shadows probably is limited to like Mathematician, Fairy Tale Luna, Alistair the Invoker, Gale Dogra, or the Magistus, uh, the Riliona. So with the budget that we have, we're probably not going to go the Invoked Engine. We definitely can't go the Invoked Engine, I believe. Uh, Riliona is also quite pricey, so we can leave that out for now. Leaving Gale Dogra, Mathematician, and Fairy Tale Luna. So if we take a look at a card like Fairy Tale Luna, there are a few uh, interesting parts about it. One, it adds another copy itself when it's normal summon, meaning that either grabs you an extra light fusion material, or that just grabs you like a follow up for the uh, for the uh, future turn. So that's actually pretty pretty good. Uh, it's actually de it also has a very very decent like disruption effect on the board against certain decks because like let's say you're playing against like Dragon Link, you can theoretically bounce back. Like a card they play one of in their extra deck, so I don't know, maybe a card like Guard Dragon LP or something, you just bounce it back right away. Uh, so, yeah, Fairy Tail Luna has a very interesting disruption effect. It can definitely, like, add itself uh, to be fusioned away, too, so you don't necessarily have to keep it on board. 
to use it as a uh, as a fusion material but it also leads me to uh the biggest problem with luna so the thing with luna is it's kind of like self-contained where it doesn't really contribute to the shells other than grabbing fodder while a card like mathematician actually starts your shadow engine even if it doesn't uh, necessarily grant you access to the fusion spell because we can't really play something like verte anaconda because it's kind of out of the price range i would think it'd make the deck uh, be too expensive uh, over the 80 dollars usd so for that reason uh i just think mathematician should be decent because mathematician uh with a bunch of traps like you can set up like your shadow engine slowly with a card like reach all wendy into hedgehog and then set up a bunch of traps i think that's fine so for that reason i think mathematician is pretty important uh, in the deck, and I think that's going to be the normal sum that we can go with. You can definitely play a card like Gale Dogger, but the thing with Gale Dogger is it's more of a combo focus card, in my opinion. If you want to be playing a control game, then you definitely want to uh, focus on your traps more. And I think Mathematician just sets that up better than a card like Gale Dogger. But with Mathematician, I think you can still definitely play the Magistus Link 1 because it's relatively cheap and it's very important to grab that light monster for a copy of construct which also reminds me while we're uh doing the extra deck we may as well add a copy of gravity controller uh these i'll just add the regular shawl staples into the extra deck so like cross sheep gravity controller uh stuff like that uh, these are pretty pretty uh set in stone staples for this deck they're re really really uh powerful which also reminds me we should be playing Shekinaga too because we are playing National Genius and of course this is very very good against a deck like Zodiacs uh, where you can fuse a uh, super poly with their Dryden or whatever since it's Earth. And now like the kind of the uh, main part of the deck that we want to focus on is the traps that are really really good on a budget. So some of the best like traps right now are actually really really uh, cheap. It's cards like Torrential Tribute, uh, Sinister Shadow Games. I would say it's definitely a good uh, good thing. Because Sinister Shadow Games, especially with a card like Nestle Genius, it gives you a lot of utility in this deck. Uh, in addition to Sinister Shadow Games, we can also play a card like Dogmatic of Punishment. Punishment, uh, as the uh, customer requested, he does want something to protect Winda. And Punishment actually does offer you that ability to protect Winda. Whereas a card like Trencher Tribute uh, doesn't necessarily do that. It kind of blew, blow up your window along with the board. But Punishment does protect your window, which is just super, super powerful. And I know I'm just kind of sidetracking here, but I did forget to add in some of the Shadal Traps. So for now, I'm going to add in like Double Rush and a Schism. I know Schism is probably going to be the most expensive part of the deck, but the rest of the deck is just so cheap that I think you can definitely afford Schism. And Schism is just so important, in a, especially in the trap build. So I think you definitely can't skip out on this. So yeah, for that reason, definitely put in Shadal Schism. And here's the other thing. There's another uh, interesting dilemma with this deck, and that is uh, it actually lacks a main deck light monster. So you would have to turn like your Mathematician into a copy of Artemis or something to get a light monster for Construct. And even in the control build, Construct is super important for setting up cards like Schism and Rational Incarnation. So, for that reason, I think we're going to want to place some light hand traps. Just three light hand traps in the main deck. And it's going to seem really, really weird. Uh, because it's the best light hand trap right now, probably like Nibiru. But Nibiru is also very, very expensive. So, we're going to have to do, make do with a card like Effect Veiler, Lan uh, Artifact Lancia, or with a card like Ghost Ogre. Uh, and between these three, I'll say the most generic one is probably going to be Ghost Ogre. It it's not the best against any deck uh it certainly but it certainly is able to make an impact on every single deck so at the very least it's able to uh hit cards from every single deck that your opponent may be playing uh so no matter what your uh ghost ogre should be able to not be dead in uh, any matchup and it's very decent uh, along with a card like cross sheep you, you can summon it back and use it as a sort of interruption against your opponent uh so for that reason ghost ogre uh, in the main deck. So, right off the bat, uh, this is like the main uh, skeleton of the deck that I, I was thinking of. It's very, very cheap, as you can tell. Like, the only expensive card is Shadal Schism in the main deck. Everything else is very, very cheap, allowing us to go more all in on the extra deck. Although, to be honest, there isn't much uh, expensive cards that you actually need in the extra deck. You can play Boral Sword because it's good with Cross Sheep. Uh, but Boral Sword and Unicorn just recently got reprinted, so it doesn't even really matter. Uh, doesn't even really matter here. I do want to put in a card like uh, Starving Venom, though, because you might be uh, using Super Poly without Shadals, 
It's very, very good for outing Dragoon, which this deck would um, other times might be uh, struggling with, to be honest. So, starting Venom in the extra deck. And then that leaves our last extra deck slot to pretty much be any flex slot that we think uh, might work. We can play the Shadal Construct, uh, like as in the Link Monster, which I think is pretty decent. Uh, because you're going to be focusing a lot on... Okay, like Sinister Shadow games, where you're able to like set up Wendy's and stuff. You're playing a very, very slow game. So getting two uh, flip monsters on the board isn't necessarily the hardest thing in the world. So that's going to leave us finished for the extra deck as of now. I think this is a pretty good uh, a pretty good extra deck for the cards, for the budget that you've been given. Uh, in terms of the main deck, I would say that you could switch out a card, a few of the Shadows, because like if we do it, let's say we randomize it, you can see like kind of a problem with the deck right away is that uh, it, it can be a little clunky at times because like the Shadal, uh, Shadal cards itself, you have to draw like fusion spells with it or uh, you, like your ideal hand because it's a good generic traps along with a play that you already have with like Mathematician and like a fusion spell and Shadal. So your hand pretty much has to be perfect in, in like in this in this deck for it to be really, really good. So like you can see with, a car, uh, with this hand, it can lead to a problem where well, we just have too many Shadals, and they don't really do anything. But that's why I play a card like Dogmatic of Punishment. I know the extra deck restriction is going to seem a little restrictive, but the thing with Punishment is it can start your engine in addition to also disrupting your opponent. So what I mean by that, of course, you send Elstral Apclone to the graveyard, and when you send Apclone, you pretty much start your engine, because if your hand's clogged full of Shadals, you add a Fusion Spell, ditch a Shadal, get its effect, or if your hand's full of... Uh, Full of spells, add a hedgehog, ditch it, uh, get its get its effect to search, uh, whatever you need. So essentially, El Shadow Aquan will pretty much always be able to get you out of a sticky situation. Uh, however, uh, since we are focusing on punishment, I do think that we should play one copy of the other NT Entis uh, and take out a card like Shadow Construct. I think this works. This uh, this should uh, this should be a pretty solid extra deck. Of course, very very cheap. But it also complements our main deck very well because of Punishment. So Punishment is going to be kind of a focal point of this deck, which, where it acts sort of as a disruption, as well as a pseudo starter in a way, uh, should you need it with a card like El Shadal Aklo. And yeah, that's pretty much going to conclude my thoughts on the main deck. I would say you could change things up a bit, lower the shell count probably, which I actually think I will do. I'm going to lower the Shadal Skomata to 1, because uh, you have more access to Shadals and Sinister Shadow games. And I think I'm just going to replace it with a copy of uh, Foolish Burial. So, yeah. This is uh, this is the deck for now. Uh, and we do have money for a side deck. We can put in like cheap generic cards like Artifact Lancia. Thank goodness this card is like super, super cheap. We can put in cards like Cosmic Cyclones. Uh, this is also really, really good. Because it's just really, really cheap and it's just a really good generic uh, staple card. And then I'm going to put in a card like Heavy Storm Duster. And the reason for that is against other back row decks, uh, this is also very, very cheap. I'm just putting in like the cheapest staples that I can think of. Uh, Pankratops, really, really good. And now we want some going second cards against like combo decks. So uh, we could put in a card like uh, Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler is relatively cheap. That should definitely be within our budget. Dark Ruler uh, works. We also uh, probably want, like, la the last two cards probably need to be, like, hand traps of some sort. In case we do need to go second and got a combo deck. We can sort of swap out our uh, traps for hand traps. And we just play, like, a c control, like, should all build with a bunch of hand traps and our regular should all monsters. I definitely, definitely think that works. Uh, and I think you do need uh, hand traps going second. So, why don't we put in a card? We can put in card like no material no material is interesting uh because obviously it it's a very like one of a kind card but it's also very 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 powerful against the right deck so yeah this is like the this is kind of like my some of my inside thoughts when i'm uh building a deck i know it may seem ranty at places but i'm trying to explain the reason behind every single card that i play uh, let me know what you guys think of this deck in the description below remember this is on an 80 us dollar budget like, I don't know how much Schism is exactly, but I assume it's around, like, 25, 30 US dollars at the very least. Um, and then, with the rest of the cards, like, it should fill up most, if not all, of the budget, honestly. But, yeah, the, the, remember, the main playstyle of, uh, of this deck was meant to be, like, a trap uh, control deck, really. 
So while we do have cards like Ghost Ogre in the main deck, uh, to send off a card like Shadow Fusion going second, I think just the most generic traps, like Sinister Shadow Game, Strange Retribute, Punishment, like they're super cheap, but they're just so high impact. Like they can be so high impact, uh, which just leads me to also want to think uh, if we should be playing like any Floodgates or anything. But I would say in Shadows, you don't really like want floodgates other than there could be only one but that's definitely an option you can consider against something like dragon link concerning how uh most of your like fusion monsters are actually different types like we have fairy as one of your main types and uh, spellcaster is the other one but you can play around you can play around with this uh build if you guys really really want to but just remember this these are just my thoughts my thoughts only uh, this is a kind of a rough draft I'm gonna be going back and forth with uh with the customer to see what he likes uh, so that's actually going to wrap up the first part. If there are any extra thoughts uh, that the customer requests, or if I find anything uh, super pressing that I need to address, I will uh, I will add it on to the end of this video. But for now, that's going to do it for me, guys. And let me know well, once again what you think of this deck profile. And before I forget, if you guys want your own deck to be like featured in one of these videos, uh, you can find my eBay link in the description below. And it's only a dollar to get your deck list uh, personally customized. And I will most likely be able to feature it on the channel as well. So keep that in mind. But with that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.